Today we're going to answer Amy's question and her question is if I'm just starting to drink wine where to where do I start and what would you recommend? So I get this question a lot. I feel like in the beginning of our wine journey people can feel a little intimidated by all the different price range and different varietal and different options available all in the marketplace and makes it really hard to know where to start and what to buy. So make sure you stick to the end of the video because I'm going to break it down in each different category and then I'm going to give you some tips on how best to purchase wine if you fall under any one of these categories. So stick to the end. All right, let's jump into it. Instead of just giving you a few wines, I think it's much better if I can actually break down the wine buying experience or wine collecting experience or everything I know into quadrant that make your life a little easier. So I have behind me a whiteboard and we're going to divide it into quadrant. So what the quadrants meant up here we have more expensive down here we're gonna have less expensive to the left we're going to have generic and on this side we're going to have unique literally every single wine that you ever think of buying can fall into this four category i'm gonna start off by going into the generic and cheap category up here on the bottom left this is Literally the one thing I think most people might start off in this quadrant myself included when I was 21 But this is a quadrant. I really don't recommend you staying in So my goal as a wine educator and a wine retailer is to try to get you out of this quadrant as fast as possible So what do I mean by the wines in this quadrant? We're talking about your two buck chat your car, uh, Francia and your Carl Rossi, you know, the things that you're getting in the bottom shelf of the supermarket, that's really cheap. Literally, we're talking about the cost of the label, the shipping, and the bottle is probably more expensive than the wine that's actually inside. At this point, you're really kind of missing the whole point. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, as far as the wine drinking, you're just doing it to pretty much getting the alcohol with a touch of sugar and grape juice. If you are doing that, I, I feel like there's a lot better way to get that enjoyment, that buzz feeling by drinking things from, by drinking other things or even hard liquor. So this is a category that I will highly recommend you um, kind of stay out of as fast as you can and move into one of the different category. So the next one I'm going to talk about is generic, but a little more expensive these are i have just so you know i have no problem with any of the other three category but generally the progression of uh, your wine drinking journey you're going to start here all right and if you're lucky and you have guidance you might actually start here but most people start down here and then they might move up to Okay, they started uh, when they were 21 drinking really cheap wine and then they're like, okay, I made a little more money now. Uh, let's spend a little more, uh, more money on wine and we want to buy better quality wine. Again, nothing wrong with this category as you go into your wine drinking journey. And this category includes things that just you can find very easily, but it's higher quality, a little more expensive. Things like Silvero, Opus One, you know, Ron Bauer, the big name brand. Nothing wrong with that and that's usually the, the trajectory that you will go. This is fun and I don't mind when people are going here. You might hear a lot of other sommelier that have very much against the big expensive but generic brand. I actually don't know what that is. Maybe it's just because you see it all the time but I think there's nothing wrong with it. This is something that will give you a good quality wine and good flavor representative of what it's supposed to taste like or they might have very specific flavor profile that really really is satisfying for a big group of people and that's why they're successful after that we kind of get into the fun part i think a lot of time after people start exploring this part i also see the journey develop from here some people will then go i think for the most part from this quadrant down to here and all to here it could happen simultaneously and or it can happen one at a time but the next category i feel like after people start drinking wines on in this category that you can find pretty much everywhere but it's better quality so they they're starting to understand oh wow so wine can be very expressive they, they could be very enjoyable then they wanted to know what else is out there so then then we go into the other category here this is not necessarily expensive but then we're going into the very unique side this is a part that I see a lot of sommeliers like to go into this group probably have the smallest population we have most of our wine drinker wine consumers in this category and you're lucky if you move here 
here. And over here, this is probably the one of the smaller group of people that falls into this category, which is we're calling the unique but uh, value or lower price point wine. We're talking about Pat Net, a lot of the wine from the Loire Valley, regions that didn't get a lot of high scoring and fame, and they don't have that big hitter red since that. Um, a little more esoteric. South America is a really good one that's starting to come up. You know, Chile, Argentina, wines from there that are geeky, that are uh, very reasonable in price and very unique, but you don't see a humongous market at least here in the US for these kind of wine. And that's why I can see a lot of the sum really gravitate towards this category because you don't have to spend a lot of money, but you're getting so much variety. So if you're someone who likes variety, that will be a really good kind of category and quadrant for you to stay for a very long time. You can do that for the rest of your life. There's absolutely no problem with that. And then we're going to jump into the last category, which is the unique and also very high end and expensive. This is kind of the category that I very much specialize in. So this is where you're looking at your Grand Cru Burgundy, some of the wines they only like literally make three to 600 bottles every vintage. So it's very hard to find, very unique and very expensive at the same time. Also, we're talking about Bordeaux, the left in Bordeaux, nice. Nah, the Bordeaux that you have heard of, the big name like Lafitte, Latouro, they're actually more on the expensive and generic side because you can get them very easily. But some of the ripening Bordeaux, La Pon, and whatever have you, they are much smaller in production, very hard to get, and the price shoot up dramatically because of that, things like Petrus. And then we also, of course, have the unicorn wines that we're talking about, wines that might be made with very famous winemakers such as Henri Joyer that's no longer with us. So he's not producing any more wines or any of the back vintage wine you can get your hands on for uh, wines like that that it just shooting through the roof. So we're talking about very unique and very expensive. The reason why I wanted to break it down this way is because I don't want to just give you two name brand, a uh, two brand and say, hey, if you're new, like try this and try that. I want to break it down and kind of show you in the long run, if you are falling in love with wine, you got bitten by the bug, what journey you could be on and just kind of look at wines as in a different category and see if that fits your style, your budget and try it out. Let's talk about where you will be able to find really cool wines like this. If the unique and budget-friendly category sounds like fun to you, you like to try a lot of variety, but you don't necessarily want to spend a ton of money, I, my big suggestion is to go towards the bigger, but yes, still boutique wine shop. Even places that's as big as, let's just say, Wine.com and Benmore and Total Wine and More and things like that, they will have wines in this category just because the, the sheer selection they have on their shelf. Um, there will be a few, especially if you live in the Bay Area, there are a few boutique winery that is run by very passionate and geeky sommeliers who love this category. There's actually a lot of them. A lot of the restaurants I see, at least in the Bay Area, also love to end towards this category. So to conclude, if you're looking for things that's of good value but unique, you can find them at the bigger boutique family-owned wine shop, and you can find some of them at the even bigger national chain wine shop. The second place is we're talking about here, the generic but expensive, so good quality wine, but it's easy to find. To be honest with you, the best deal you're gonna get for these kind of wines are generally at your big club member only store. I see a lot of great deal at Costco just because they have the buying power. And then of course it is very winery dependent because a lot of the time Costco will push the price for wine a little bit lower than the winery wanted to. And once you establish as the huge discount winery, then a lot of the consumer will wait for that sale before they purchase wine from you. So some of the wineries hold out and they don't sell wine to Costco for exactly that reason, but there's plenty of wine, a good big generic brand that are relatively expensive that will sell their wine to Costco and you can get the a better deal than anywhere else. For example, wines like Dom Perignon, uh, it's expensive but generic. Uh, Costco usually have the best deal. I can, usually can't find better deals than that. So that will probably be your best bet if you're looking for things that's recognizable. If you're hosting a party, you want everyone to know the wine that you're drinking, that's very easily recognizable, but you want a good deal and you want to try your luck, the big box 
membership store will probably have the best deal for that. Last but not least, this is the part where, again, a very small group of people fall into and you do have to do a bit more homework and you have to understand a little bit more of the wine trade to get the best deal. But if you are jumping into the really high-end, very, very unique side of the wine business, looking for unicorn wine, high-end Bordeaux, Grand Cru Burgundy that you only find two, three, 600 uh, bottles a year, a couple barrels, things like that. I highly recommend you go with someone who is very ad educated in wine. They can understand exactly what your palate is looking for, what's missing your collection. They can walk into your wine room and look at your collection and understand the palate that you have, understand what you like, and be able to direct you and guide you to the next thing that you might also like. And you also want to find a wine shop that's reputable, that is going to give you wines of good quality, especially when we're looking into the unicorn wine side. Uh, if any of you are watching documentaries sour grapes there are counterfeits out there and there are wines that you can buy from private seller and if you don't vet them properly you might end up with a wine that is not of high quality and or you could accidentally buy a bottle of fake wine if you find yourself in this category of your journey make sure you find someone you can trust who's willing to educate you who's willing to be transparent with you on where they get the wine how they get the wine and all that good stuff and another way to get wine that is listed in this category is through auction. But just remember if you're doing auction, even in the big auction houses, because they're so big, they're sourcing wine from so many different places, you have to be careful and make sure that the condition is correct. You're not gonna spend a lot of money buying a bottle of wine that is not drinkable. And a lot of the time with auction, you also have to be aware that you don't get too excited and overbid because a lot of auction houses, after the hammers drop, there's usually another 17 to 20% of buyer's fee plus storage fee plus the shipping fee. I'm going to circle back to me. If wines in this two category really intrigue you and that's where you are at and you're looking for people that you can trust, I would love to talk to you as well. That's what I do. I specialize in finding wines for my small handful of clients most of the time in this category. When and if I can find great deals, I also do sell wines in this category as well. But really, I do specialize in the very unique and very high-end side of the wine world. And if you just want to get another source to get wines of high quality but really good value, I would like to invite you to reach out to me and you can sign up to my mailing list at www.angiesound.com. You'll get all the updated educational videos just like this wine and you will never miss out on any of the wine deals I have to offer. And either rather it's in this category, this category, or this category, never in this category though. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time.